welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be replacing the fuel tank inlet check valve as a second part to my video where I replaced the fuel pump in my 2004 Chevrolet SSR. So if you want to see the procedures to remove the fuel tank to get it ready for this procedure, go check out that video. I'll have a link down in the description section or up on the right hand corner of this video screen. GM has a document 14423C as in Charlie, special coverage adjustment, fuel tank inlet check valve fracture. This outlines a repair that they would perform for up to 15 years or 150,000 miles. And since mine's beyond the 15 years, they would not perform this for free. They would perform it at a warranty rate of over $1,100 plus tax. Wasn't really eager to spend another $1,200, $1,300 after tax to replace the fuel tank on this SSR after just replacing the fuel pump. So I decided to do some research and I found that there is a product from Dorman Products 577-106, which is a replacement inlet check valve for this very common problem on the SSR, Trailblazer, and GMC Envoy. So I checked with my SSR technical resource at Simple Engineering, Mike at Simple Engineering LLC. We discussed this issue and he seemed to think that this looks like a reasonable approach to try to fix the issue, as did I. So Mike was very generous and decided to donate the part to the effort to see how well this repairs the issue. So in this video, I'm gonna go through and get that new Norman Products inlet check valve installed. Thank you, Mike, for donating the parts of this particular repair effort. And if you want to check out Mike's Simple Engineering LLC website, there will be a link down in the description section of this video if you're looking for any parts for your Chevrolet SSR pickup. Since this is a fuel system repair, make sure you have proper protective eyewear, gloves, and approved storage containers for any fuel that you remove from the fuel tank, and make sure it's a well-ventilated work environment. We now have the tank out and we're going to have to break this fully off from the tank. So let's get this fume cap out of the way here. It's leaking at the bottom. up here. We're going to take a uh, wheel and try to clean up the surface to make the outside as smooth as possible. And we have a bird that's uh, criticizing the work in the background here. So there's, see this was on the top. So this is the area that was leaking. And I, you can see I didn't even cut that. That was already kind of separated there. So that's where I was getting a leak. So for now, I'm going to take this stopper Put it in here to make sure I don't introduce anything into the tank. Because I'm going to have to clean around here. I'm going to try to use the abrasive wheel to do so. I'm now going to try to clean up the outside surface as a nylon bushing for the outside of the dormant product has uh, something smooth to set up against. And we're going to try this 3M Rolex abrasive wheel. See if this drill is going to have enough speed to be meaningful here. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to do some manual trimming of this high ridge over here. See, we have the recess here, and then the material left over from from where we cut it. So it's still got a bunch of those materials still in it. I believe we have a uh, relatively flat surface. It's still hair high over here. But the uh, side to side is uh, nice and even. And uh, with the stopper, I did sacrifice the stopper to some degree, but that prevented all the material from going into the tank. So uh, now we have to remove the fuel pump to string the inlet check valve into the tank. So let's uh, get this cleaned off. Now we're going to remove the fuel pump. We have to disconnect the two fuel lines and remove the lock ring and then pull that out. I'm going to set it in the pan over here. We need to be careful with the level sensor, make sure we don't bend that. And while we're, we have that out, then we're going to feed the wire for the inlet check valve down on that end and then get that fed into the opening down there. There's some ash in the air, so I need to blow this out several times. <laughs> So let's get these lines taken off. One, which is the return line, it looks like. So we'll get that over here. pressure feed line and some fuel coming out of it. All right, now I'm going to leave those on because we're going to, of course, reuse those. Let's get this on here again. We have this little tab over here we need to disengage as well. And that's where one of the grooves or tabs from the uh, tool go into as well. it might be an issue with that there. So let me get that removed so we can get the tool in place. I transferred these over when I installed the fuel pump after I put it in, so let's get this removed. Thank you.
get the lock tab out of the way. And now it's fully seated. Half inch drive. This takes a little bit of tor torque here to get this off, so hopefully we don't uh, let's pull, it, let's pull it towards me. Pretty easy. Again, ash falling in the air. And one more time. Before we pull it out. It. And turn the level sensors on that side. And the two lock tabs over here. All right, now we have the ability to string the wire through. I'm gonna put a bag over the hole for now. Again, with the ash, I don't want it falling in. Until I'm actually ready to insert it. So I'm just gonna set that there for the moment. the Dorman product here. Let's actually go down to this end here. So here we have the Dorman inlet check valve replacement product. It's going to come out of this hole. The outer lock nut is goes on the outside of the tank, of course. And then we have a nylon washer ring bushing that uh, is to go on the outside. That's why I was trying to get this as smooth as possible to have a smooth surface to have that seat against. It is not the seal for this. Let's uh, open this up, get our wire out. Now this gets inserted with this gasket on the inside of the tank and there's a nylon bushing behind that. And in the instructions it states that you're supposed to align a mark on this with uh, the U shape and the hose, which is on the top side, which was the original notch. Remember the original notch was here and there, there was a little U shape here. There's no marking on this. I called Dorman product support and I said there's no particular orientation, although others had suggested that uh, the flapper door open in this manner so that when you fuel, fuel up your vehicle that uh, the uh, flapper would open in that way. And then, of course, this is so that if your vehicle flips over, the, there's no fuel coming back out the gas filler. So I'm going to go ahead and feed the wire through. I'm going to use this tape measure to assist me in getting this wire through because the wire is just too flimsy to have any enough rigidity to get down to that point. I've tried reaching in. So rather than mess around with that anymore, I'm going to insert it into the end of the tape measure. Fit in here. Looks like it will. All right, I'm going to remove the stopper. And, all right, let's insert this again. Already passed here. Put 
the lock ring on it on this end to hold it. And hold this as we pull this through. And for the moment, just put the stopper there. Get the tape measure out of the way. Now we're going to prep the inlet check valve, get it ready to be tied to the wire on that end. Alright, let's get this tied around here nicely. We'll be able to see the check valve um, from that end so we know which way to rotate it. And I'm going to blow this off, make sure there's been no ash. I see some stuff in the threads here. Alright, we have the gasket and the nylon, thin nylon in here. I'm going to drop this into the tank. I'm going to pull, start pulling on the wire. I should feel it starting to pull that, and I do. Balancing that. <laughs> there we go. So let's see where our upper door is pointing. Can't really see from here. Okay, there is, with the flapper door so that it opens this way into the tank. And let's get this off of here. All right, we don't want to drop this at this point. <laughs> so we have the nylon washer. And then the nut. And that was why the, it was important to smoothen out the outside of the tank so there was a relatively smooth surface for that nylon bushing washer to go up against. So I'm gonna try to snug this up by hand first. So we're not gonna lose it in the tank anymore. So I'm going to confirm again the flapper door orientation. Looks like it can go a little bit like that. And basically now the rubber washer on the inside, or gasket, rubber gasket with a nylon washer, that's going to push up against the rubber gasket, and that's where the seal comes from. And then this is for the reinforcement on the outside. So I'm going to get a channel locks and uh, start tightening that up. Alright, now that we have that in place, I'm going to uh, go ahead and put this little bag over it again so we don't get any ash into it for the moment. Get this fuel pump back in place. I'm gonna have a new O ring. I see Delco G30. Yes. 
Even though this gasket is relatively new, I'm going to replace it since it's been used. level sensor in without bending it. Tip it in, drop it down, and get this notch into the notch on the top of the tank. service tool. That's there. And this, as it torques back in, this will push out the plastic tab that will monitor just in case it doesn't. It's under all the uh, tabs there. Okay, that snapped into the place. Move the tank a little bit. And once we pull the tool out, we will get the tab, this plastic tab, fit right back in place. So we're done with that. Now, as I put these back on, I'm going to lube the tubing just so we get the O-rings to seat easily. A little unused oil here, bring this back in place. Although, we do have to put the taps back on. That one. That one. Okay, let's wiggle this on. The O-ring engaged and snap. And get this one aligned. Wiggle on and snap. So those two are fully engaged. I'm going to try a leak test here to see if I can detect anything. I have some dish washing detergent here. Even though it says water and rubbing alcohol, I've repurposed this container. And I'm going to blow some air into the, pressure, the fuel tank pressure sensor hole. And I blocked off this end. Fuel pump is back in place. I just wanted to see if I get any slight pressure in the tank, whether we get any bubbles out of here to make sure that we're not going to be leaking The air was escaping through the vent valve here, which is normal since it's not powered. And uh, I think we're ready. We have the fuel pump back in place with the new gasket O-ring and the, the lock rings back in place. Fuel lines are reconnected. I've done a leak test. It seems to be good. I don't see any gross air bubbling. And uh, now we'll get the tank back up into the vehicle. I'll put the pressure sensor back in place. Actually, we'll do that right now. And uh, then we'll get it back in the vehicle and hopefully have a leak-free inlet check valve.
There were two issues I ran into with the inlet check valve installation once I got the tank up into the vehicle. You can see that the clamp on the fuel filler hose is actually metal and wraps around the edge, which is going to be an issue with the aluminum inlet check valve that we have in place. And two, the length of the nipple is shorter with this aluminum version than it compared to the plastic version. So here's the plastic one. You can see that the enlarged part of the nipple is further out and that caused the enlarged part of the hose to be further out so that U shape in the hose, I ended up cutting out to about a quarter inch off of the end and also removed the clamp and broke off that metal tab so that I could put the clamp back onto the hose and use it successfully with the new product. So with that, I cut out, like I said, I cut off one quarter of an inch at the very end, basically removing almost all of that U-shape uh, portion on the end of the hose. That allowed the hose to go fully to, up to the threaded portion of the new inlet check valve and the bulge where it was sealing before is in the appropriate place. So with that, I was able to successfully get that installed and it ended up being leak free. So I'm testing it right now for the next week outside of the garage, making sure that I you know, drive the vehicle and that I find no leaks are present. And so far there have been none. And if I can say that after a week or so of driving the vehicle, the SSR will regain its spot back in the garage. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, make sure you hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos like this to the channel. Again, check out the Simple Engineering LLC link down in the description section. I can thank you, Mike, for donating the part for this repair, and I'll see you on the next one.